Hello people the web and YouTube DBK here. Welcome back to another hack time tutorial video. Woo! So okay guys, as you can tell by the name of today's video, today I'm gonna be teaching you how to block ports using nothing more than our USB rubber ducky. And well, just like all my other previous USB rubber ducky tutorials, you do not need one of these things to pull off the attack. Although it is hella handy to have one because it takes only seconds with this thing versus minutes by typing it out by hand. Now, today's tutorial is going to be really short because it's not really well finished. To be honest, this was going to be like a three part thing put into one part. I was going to actually have multiple attacks ready to show off, but since my thing that I ordered is still in the mail and on its way, I figured I'll just save that for a whole nother video. But yeah, to do this, all you basically need is a USB rubber ducky or a few minutes of free time to type it into a keyboard and some admin write access. Now, first of all, this script here, I'm just going to talk you through it. Basically, we're opening up, up our, ugh, we're opening up a run line, just like we do in pretty much every other USB rubber, rubber ducky tutorial. In order to launch command line as an administrator. Now, this is very important for this attack, so keep that in mind if the victim's machine does not have administrative access, this will not work. But basically, we're telling it to open up admin, and then we're gonna tell it to confirm, and then basically, the whole attack is just this one line right here. Now, that's why I said this video isn't really complete. I was gonna actually add more to this in the future, but I would figured I'd show off what I have right now. Now, basically, what this command does, it's gonna actually add a rule into the Windows firewall. Now this rule is called allow 80, but it's not really. We're actually telling it to block port number 80. And if you do not know this port 80 is basically all HTML traffic. So once this attack is actually launched and ran, the, the, the victim will not get any web pages at all, except for like a certain fewer things like that. But basically you can do this with any port. If you have Skype and you just want to block Skype, open up Skype, go under its settings and it configure the ports and then just basically replace this port number here with that of Skype. And well, guess what? Skype will no longer work right. And with that said, I was actually going to add in a host file thing at the bottom of this so that can actually permanently change the host file in order to really screw somebody up. So basically any site that would work normally when we actually have this blocked will remain blocked. But I didn't get to that part yet. This is just basics. It will lock out certain sites but certain ones will still come through and I'll show you what I mean in a few. But with all that said and done, how about we launch this attack by plugging in our USB... Come on. By plugging in our USB rubber ducky. Now, hopefully this will work on first go. I tested it a few times, but I do know I have to change the speeds a bit because this is a little too much of a delay. Basically, I need to like really speed up the delays or or whatever. I can't think right right now, but yeah, that's it. The attack's done. That was only three seconds, and I think I can add like another three second little bit to it to, well, permanently screw somebody up by changing that host file I was talking about earlier. But I'll get on that in another video when I'm talking about how to do this kind of attack um, remotely. Now, the remote attack is pretty cool, but it hasn't showed up in the mail. So, yeah, that's just a little bit of info on what I'm going to be doing soon. But, yeah, how about this? We open up the web browser and type in a site like um, DeviantArt, maybe. I like using that site a lot. And as you can see... Your internet access has been blocked. Now, it will say reasoning, checking the firewall and whatnot, and usually when you go into the tool, you'll, you won't be able to see that in the Windows firewall settings, that that rule we added because it's called allow 80, and you wouldn't think that'd be the rule causing problems, but yeah, basically the attack's done, and to remove it, you just follow the reverse steps. You can add allow at the end of the action command, or you can actually just right click open up command prompt as an admin and then type in net sh and then firewall oops crap if i can type firewall and then you type in reset that's basically how you turn it off it's really simple to enable the hack and at the same time it's really simple to disable the hack just know if you do it the method that the way that I just showed on how to disable it, some things like Google Chrome when you reopen them will actually kind of like give you errors I guess. Here let's see if you can do it. 
No, they don't. It doesn't really give you errors. It'll just say, "Do you want to allow access back to Google Chrome?" And then you just hit allow. It's it just basically resets the firewall. But yeah, that's pretty much it for today's video, guys. I really hope you all enjoyed and stay tuned because I will be teaching you how to block Wi-Fi remotely, as well as how to modify the host file to allow certain websites through while other ones remain blocked but with that said i'm gonna leave this video off here dtpk signing off peace turn your rubber ducky either into mass storage and keyboard or just mass storage and vice versa there's actually that is so damn creepy i actually didn't think to see anything <laughs>